the Walker's deck. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just very innocuous, right? Just like two power flyer, how good can that really be? But these decks really want to use removal spells on things that they can't block. And that's not a, a winning plan against Chandra's Phoenix. All right, well, Manny was the fourth seed, so he gets to be on the play in the finals here. Starts the game on Mutavolt, so not a creature. Gonzalo does have the turn on Elvish Mystic, and that's usually pretty good in these style of decks. We'll see what Manny has in store, however. Looks like he has a kill. He's choosing between a threat and a kill spell for the elf here. Yeah, I mean, it's like threat, kill spell, attack with Mutavolt. It has plenty of options. And goes with the third, as you mentioned. Attack of Mutavolt. It's going to get in for two. Gonzalo is down to 18. You got to think, forcing of Gonzalo to have one of his three basic forests to start the game. This is a deck that punches itself a lot with its mana base. Yeah, it's certainly true. And I think red decks in general just love when things like the Ravnica Shocklands are legal, right? It's like, it makes their Absolutely. job so much easier. I mean, you even see that right in modern where when everybody's fetching and shocking, Burn becomes one of the top decks. And we see Gonzalo that turn made a Scry land and a Syl Sylvan Carriage, so a great start for him. But will it be good enough? Manny gets to play Young Pyromancer and then shocks the Elf. Looks like that was the reason he didn't want to shock last turn. He wanted the Elemental with it. Yeah, I mean, it just gets to use his mana a little bit better, where he gets in the two points from the Muta Vault, and then this turn he gets to use all his mana to use uh, the Shock and the Young Pyromancer. Kill the Elf. Uh, you weren't really scared of anything that can, Gonzalo could accelerate into on that turn. So it's like, okay, I'll let the Elf live for a turn, but I'm definitely killing it next turn. And then you get an Elemental out of the deal. Yeah, and we're actually looking at Gonzalo's hand. This looks to be a great hand for this matchup. So he had Mystic, Carrioted. I'm going to run you through some of the other cards in his hand. He has double Mizium Mortars, Corsair of Crufix, another land, and then Xenagos the Reveler. Like, this doesn't... This seems almost tailor-made for the matchup. Yeah, I was going to say, if you could pick your hand, like, maybe you want something like Nissa, uh, just, like, looming on top of your deck, right? But other than that, it's like, you have the Acceleration, you have perfect mana, you have Corsair of Crufix to hold the fort and gain some life, you have the removal spells to kill those important cards like Young Pyromancer. Like, what What more do you want? Yeah, Gonzalo had a choice there. He could have either made a Corsair... He could have made a Corsair, but instead opted to just play a tap land and Mizium Mortars away the Young Pyromancer. Really didn't want Manny to have any more turns with that card. Yeah, I mean, you, you could very easily see a turn from Manny where he's like, play a burn spell, make an elemental, play a burn spell, make an elemental, stoke the flames, make an elemental. It's right. like, okay, well, things <laughs> things are kind of getting out of control here. Yeah, and Manny's turn not too threatening here. He made another Mutavolt and then swung the elemental and Mutavolt. Uh, character got to block the two, so Man Gonzalo only took one off the elemental. He still had a very healthy 17. And now maybe he gets to start pushing some threats. He drew, he drew Chandra Pyromaster as well, so... Just another good card here. I don't know if he has another land yet, so he's going to start on Corsair. Looks like he has a land more wastes. Yeah, so if you want to run Chandra out there, he would have to tap the Sylvan Carrion, which is not really what you want to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. He does get a free land more waste off the top of his deck, though, so that's going to put him back up to 18. You see Stomping Ground waiting in the wings. Yeah, now with the Corsair, the Mutavolts are not that big of an issue as long as your Corsair doesn't get stoked by the flames. Yeah, Manny ends up there, lightning strikes, lightning strikes, and sends it upstairs. Gonzalo down to 15, but that's still that's a long way to go for Manny if he's on the casting burn spells to the face plan. Yeah, it is. But a lot of the burn spells in this deck are very strong. You know, you have things like Stoke the Flames, which are really powerful. You have uh, Chandra's Phoenix, which does a lot of the legwork. If you ever get to stick a Goblin Rabble Master and clear the way for it, that thing can get out of control really quickly. And he still has those two Mutavolts threatening, too. So if he can get around this Corsair of Crufix, he has a decent amount of threats now. Yeah, he does play the Goblin Rabble Master he talked about for the turn. And rather than attacking, and this is one of my favorite plays, that he's going to stoke the flames at the Corsair. I like this a lot because it means he doesn't have to suicide his goblin token. He can actually just get a second one next turn. Yeah, so now the Corsair's out of the way, and you have Rabble Master, goblin token, elemental token, two mutavolts, another goblin token coming next turn potentially. Like, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, and this, is, this one's one of the better hands for Gonzalo here. So we'll see what he can do. He does have... It looks like he does have the option of Mizium Mortars overloaded available to him if he's willing to sh shock for it. No, actually, he's a, he's a red short. Well, no, he could shock for Stomping Ground and then make Mizium Mortars. Right. But, and this is where Mutavolt becomes a problem, right? Like, he has that, but the man still has four more damage. Yeah, so you shock down to 13, and then you take another four from Mutavolt, so you're at nine. And it's like, well, last turn you were at 18. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> Ding. So his options are Mortars, Chandra, and Xenagos here. Let's see which one he goes for. 
I mean, it's possible you might want to just cast mortars on the Rabble Master, make a Xenagos. I could also see overloading the Missium mortars. Gonzalo does have a lot of options. He's going to make Xenagos start there. Makes a Seder. No, none of this plussing that we've seen all tournament. And then it's Lanwar Wastes and Missium mortars on the Rabble Master. And, like, you pretty much have to do that play, right? There's too much danger. If Manny can, say, go Mountain Shock on your Karyatid, uh, on your uh, Seder token, like, the Mutavolts and would help make the Rabble Master all the way into a 6-2 that turn. Like, this is a ton of damage. Yeah, I don't think you can risk that Rabble Master hitting you. That's way too much. Yeah, remember, the Mutavolts are also goblins, so, yeah, they need to get him off the table. We'll see where Manny, how much reload he has. He does have another mountain in hand. He's going to magma jet the Seder token. Looks like he wants to get the Xenagos. And that makes sense because you're losing out on some damage now, but I think Xenagos in the long run is going to prevent more damage uh, than you would have to use to kill it this turn. So I think overall Manny is netting damage. Yeah, we're looking at his scry right now. Manny has a Fire Drinker Seder and a third Mutavolt on his scry. The, he does have a mountain, so the third Mutavolt's live. The okay. question is whether he wants, whether, whether he would rather draw Mutavolt or a random card from the deck. Yeah, and he certainly has cards that are more powerful than Mutavolt, but how greedy can you afford to be? Right, how greedy can you afford to, can you afford to be? How greedy do you need to be? You know, how, right. how do you feel about this game? There, there does seem to be a dynamic going on here where Manny's spent a lot of burn spells, and we've seen... Right. Shock, to, like, they're all going at creatures. They're all going at threats. None of them are going at Gonzalo. You know, we, yeah. we stoked the flames to Courser. We magma jetted a Seder. We shocked an Elvish Mystic. Like, I mean, they're not saying that any of those are bad. In fact, I think they were all correct. But it means that Gonzalo's at 15. We see Manny use Mutavolt. And one of the tokens who take down Xenagos, the last token, hits Gonzalo. Now, Gonzalo confidently knows what he wants to do. He's going to shock for stomping ground. Looks like Chandra. And she's going to... Does he want to kill Cedric Phillips or Chris Van Meter? Goes for the Cedric token. Yeah, let's kill Cedric. He's not even here this weekend. He's probably watching at home. So we're just left with the elemental token. He's got a pair of Muta Vaults. Manny... Yeah, he played. I played a mountain last turn, so looks like he has he has the fire drinker Seder. I think lightning strike is his last card. Yeah. So now he's in man. He's in kind of an awkward spot because he kept the fire drinker Seder on top, thinking that like basically any threat is a good threat, right? But now you're facing down this Chandra, and it's like, uh, well, I don't know how I feel about keeping that fire drinker Seder on top anymore because. Getting rid of Chandra is a lot, like five loyalty. That's yeah. that's five potential damage that could go at Gonzalo, which would put him at seven, and that's pretty low. And unless Manny has a land in hand, he can't get rid of Chandra this turn either. Right. And if he did have a land, he would have to lightning strike Chandra if he's willing to do that. He's going to fire up both Muta Vaults. The whole team swings in. That's going to be three damage to Chandra. She drops down to two. Kyrtid prevents her from dying by jumping in the way of a Mutavolt. And we see Fire Drinker Seder for Manny. That is that is aggressive, right? He's playing it into a Chandra. Well, the Chandra is going to kill something no matter what. Right. And I, I think at this point, you use your mana. You're okay with the fact that she's killing now, going to kill Seder instead of the token. And this is what happens. He goes to... Takes two off that. He goes to 17. Yep. Another land for Gonzalo. And a pass. There were Gonzalo on one card in his hand. I believe it is a Mizium Mortars. Not too helpful against a bunch of Mutavolts, but... Yeah. So if, if you're Gonzalo, how do you feel about using the Chandra to kill the Fire Drinker Seder for sure, as opposed to using the Zero ability and trying to hit something that could potentially put you super far ahead? Like maybe hit something like a Nissa? I think I want to kill the Seder because Seder can swing through Karyatid on this board. Yeah. Um, Manny's going to use his whole turn to to knock Chandra down, to get Chandra off the battlefield. And he did play his third Mutavolt, so he top topped off that Magma Jet. I mean, Gonzalo with a Mutavolt of his own, but he has no action right now. You're right, he needs a Nissa. Uh, a Corsair of Krufix would be great. 
a Xenagos would be pretty good too. Yeah, basically anything would be great, but these, these John Planeswalker decks end up playing a lot of, uh, I guess, air in their decks. You know, it's like you have Karyatid, you have Elvish Mystic, you have a bunch of mana sources, uh, you have some cards that might not be the right answers for the threats that your opponent has. And there we go. Corsair of Kruvix. Gonzalo, that last turn, um, he tried to block the Mutabelt. That took the Lightning Strike from Manny's hand. And then he got to draw, draw, draw Corsair, which is pretty excellent here. Yeah, certainly. And then, it, you know, he has a Rectos' return on top of his deck, which is okay, not great. Uh, if, if you ever get into a somewhat racing situation, like Rectos' return is a great finisher. But at this point, Manny's hand has basically just been completely expended. A very aggressive attack from Manny. I swung all three mutabolts and the token, and you had to think something was up because Gonzalo took three, and indeed it was. Manny had drawn Shock, so Shock dealt the final two points to deal with Corsair of Crufix. Uh, looking at Vasquez, Velasquez's list, I was trying to think, okay, what does he want a top deck? All right, I said the, the best card, he has a one of Bioblight in the main. Yeah. That, would, that, would be my, that would be my top pick on this board right now. Yeah, probably. I mean, Nissa might be, like, the obvious one, right? It's like, oh, I get this steady stream of 4-4s. Four That's pretty good, okay, right? Okay, yeah. But, I mean, Bioblight might just completely stabilize him. Yeah, we see three more points. Gonzalo is down to four. He cast a large rack as his return that turn to put Manny down to 12. And now he's not going to take three a turn. He's going to take one. He draws another Karyatid. Here come two Mutabolts and an Elemental. Gonzalo takes one. He's down to three, but that's a pretty precarious number against this Rabble Red deck. They're very capable of dealing three. And Elvish Mystic. So now we've stopped all the creatures. But Lightning Strike still deals three, and that's what he got Gonzalo to. Manny Oriana top decks it and is up a game. I really like the way that Manny played that game. Well, so Gonzalo had what we deemed almost a perfect hand in that matchup, right? Yeah. I okay. mean, he, like I said, he did need a thing at the top end that would either stabilize him or, you know, put some pressure on Manny. And Manny just weathered through, like, all the coursers, all the mortars. No big deal. Yeah, and it shows, I think, a strong matchup for him. But I really – I agree. I liked how he played it. Normally, I'd be, you'd be wary of pointing so many burn spells at creatures, you know? Like, one of the, the, the pitfalls of playing a deck with a lot of burn is you end up, if you kill too many things, then you can't kill your opponent. Right, but all those Muta Vaults did so much work. Right, I think Manny correctly identified that the Muta Vaults meant he didn't have to burn his opponent, and he was able to play, like, adjust his game plan. Yeah, we'll just grind his board down to basically nothing, and then just get him for, like, three points a turn, and that's fine. Right. Well, Manny's up a game. He's going to need one more. He's won three straight games over John Walkers. Can he get the fourth and win the tournament? We'll find out in a second. But first, we're going to ask you our last trivia question. If you've been watching the top eight with us, this question should come as no surprise. Uh, we've already talked about the RTR sets on their way out. That's Return to Ravnica and Gate Crash. So we're going to look at our last set and reminisce about the cards. So our question for you, this is for a year's worth of Star City Premium. If you could open just one more Booster of Dragon's Maze, what rare would you want to open and why? Send us your creative answers, your card preferences. Make sure you have the hashtag SCG Premium. And at the end of the finals, one of you will be selected to win 12 months of SCG Premium. All right, I have my answer. What's yours? Um, I'm going to go with Possibility Storm. Okay, that's a cool one. Right, so I actually, this was a combo that's in standard right now. So this was the worst deck idea I had in a while. So you're holding out on everyone. Okay, yeah. You had a sweet go. combo that you could have so, had so, people play on the last right. week. So here's the thing. You play Possibility Storm and Eidolon of Rhetoric. Okay, then what happens? I play a 65-card deck. <laughs> okay. So we get them both in play. I'm like, hey, no one can play spells anymore. And... You deck first. Uh, and yeah, that, that's my whole plan. Now, there is a problem with this strategy, and the problem is that Mutavolt exists as a card, and a couple mm. people play it. Yeah, it's tough. So I'm going to assemble my combo, and I probably will die to Mutavolts. Okay. But, but I have a 1-4, so maybe yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I got the first Mutabelt covered. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right. Uh, make sure you, tr you tweet your answer to us. Just as a reminder, this promotion is sponsored by Star City Games Premium and is not affiliated with Twitch TV um, but, or with Twitter. So, But we do use, make sure, if you're following us at SCG Live and have this hashtag, you'll be eligible to win. So, you want my answer? Yeah. Yeah. What are Ral, you? Ral Zarek. Ral, okay, so you know what? That guy has not seen as much play as I wanted him to see. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all I wanted to do, I wasn't going to play with it because okay. I, I think it falls a little short. But, but you want to open it. I want to open it, and then I want to have David McDarby sign it, and then I would cherish it always. Has he, has he 
Did you cosplay as Ralzer? He did at Gen Con. Okay. At Gen Con, I know yeah. he's done Jace. And I, yeah. Okay, it was Ralzer. Ralz, Ralz the new one. I mean, like he's always going to be a Jace guy, right? But yeah, I mean, he's still a blue planeswalker. I, I can get, I can get behind that. Yeah. All right, looking at our sideboards, we've seen this before from Manny, um, and what he, what he can board in the matchup. We talked about possibilities of Perforos, Chandra, and Boros Reckoner, but let's look at Gonzalo's sideboard. These John Walker's decks, as you said, have been all over the place. What weapons does he bring? Well, uh, he has two Miscutter Hydra, two Scavenging Ooze, two Doomblade, two Magma Spray, two Anger of the Gods, two Duress, one Rakdos' Return, and two Thoughtseize. And he has a decent amount of options and uh, certainly more options than Steven Mann had in the matchup. So he has two Scavenging Oozes, a couple Doom Blades, which are okay. You know, he's already got plenty of removal spells. Maybe he wants some more, or maybe he wants to kind of upgrade some of the ones that he already has. Two Magma Sprays, which are definitely coming in just because of how cheap they are and how good they are against Chandra's Phoenix. Anger of the Gods is coming in probably for a similar reason. Also Exile Chandra Phoenix and good against things like Goblin Rebel Master or Young Pyromancer if they get out of control. And then things like the rest and Rakdos' Return can be really good against things like Stoke the Flames and just Manny's abundance of burn spells. You know, he already has a Rakdos' Return in the main. We saw that last game he top decked it and really, you know, he pointed a six point burn spell at Manny, but it didn't really do too much of too yeah, much I mean, that game. That thing was, that Rectos' return was a little too late, and I feel like, given the draw that Gonzalo had, if he had it a little earlier, maybe it would have been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the question is, do you want, like, is this a card that you just want a lot more of? He already has one. Do you do you want a second? Like, I think on the play, you want the second one. On the draw, it's kind of sketchy. Maybe you only right. want one. And this is the second time. One other thing, this is just a note in the deck. It's the second time I've seen sideboarded Thought Seizes. And, like, to me, Thought Seizes is just, like, this generic, like, I think it, it holds, you know, it's in the running for best card in standard right now. Like, it's just really powerful. But we're seeing these John Walker's decks not play them in the main, and they're, they're playing them out of the board. Well, I think one of the things that this John Walker deck is really good at is top decking powerful cards in the late game, whereas drawing a Thoughtseize on turn 10 is generally not that good. And also, uh, the mana base features a lot of enter the battlefield tap lands, right? So you don't get to Thoughtseize on one. You don't have the starts like Thoughtseize into Pack Rat that the decks like Mono Black Devotion have. So you can't really capitalize on how powerful that card is in this deck, I think. So when you're playing Elvish Mystics and Sylvan Caryatids and a bunch of Temples, it's not guaranteed that you'll have time to thought seize when you want to thought seize. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly true, but also because you have those cards, you're going to be drawing a lot of those cards on the later turns of the game, and you really don't want that. Yeah, you already have, a, so you already have a lot of cards that are somewhat weaker, like these mana creatures that are weaker in the late game. Yeah, a lot of your cards have diminishing returns already, and I don't know if you want to further exacerbate that fact. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, we are underway. Gonzalez on the play. Manny is on a six card Honor hand here. And Gonzalo, just with a couple so stomping grounds to start the game, looks like he has a lot of removal featured among them Mizium Mortars and Magma Spray. Yeah, we saw him move that Magma Spray up top uh, to the front of his hand when he had that stomping ground open. And it, it felt like it didn't really matter what Manny played. If, if he played anything, he was going to kill it. All right, and Gonzalo. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there. He kept a two lander on turn three, drew his third land, and now gets to play Corsair of Krufix. He actually has a uh, pair of Corsairs in his hand. Aubrey. So his hand doesn't have the manic elements that you normally want in John Walkers, but a pair of Corsairs might just be enough against Rabble Red anyway. Yeah, especially on your play, when you're on the play. Like maybe when you're on the draw, that might actually be a little too slow, right? You could just get run over. Yeah, I mean, especially when you have the Corsairs backed up by cards like Magma Sprays, it seems like you probably won't get run over and you have time to start gaining life with these guys. Yeah, but like we saw in game one, Gonzalo had that draw. He had the removal spells. He had the Corsair of Grufix. Going into like turn five or something, he was at 18 life. And Manny still just like ground down his board and then eventually nickel and dimed him out with Beetle Vaults. So eventually Gonzalo is going to need something like Anissa to actually put pressure on Manny and close this game out. Do you think here, you know, Manny's kind of playing his turn three play, can Manny win through the Corsairs, or does he have to kill them? I don't think he has to. He can certainly have the all burn spell draw, right? Or just like Chandra's Phoenix and burn spells. But with two Corsairs, then it's like every land drop gains two. Like winning through, burning through that seems really hard. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly true, but are you going to be like, okay, I'm going to lightning strike and shock one of your Corsairs. Now you have this other one. Okay, I'll stoke the other one. I suppose you're right. He's he's, he's scared enough of the person that he Manny's turn for the play play for the turn was double shock to take care of Corsair. And then here's 
Here's the Singer. It's here's another Corsair. Gonzalo gains the life, goes up to 19. Yeah. How do you feel about waiting until Gonzalo's draw step to use those two shocks so I can see the card? Yeah. So you can see the card, but also Gonzalo gets to see the card, right? So you both get the information. Who do you think can use that better? Is that something worth doing? I would. I like how Manny played it. I actually don't think Rabble Red like. It, information is fun, but not great. Whereas, like, right, and I've seen people make that play. Whereas, you know, Gonzalo, he plays things like maybe he has a Chandra in his hand, maybe he has a, a Temple in his hand. I think Gonzalo has a lot more things he can do with the top card of his deck. Yeah. And we see Manny take his turn. and that's going to be an attack for two from Mutavolt, and then a casting of Young Pyromancer. And Gonzalo, his deck is just firing on all cylinders here. Draws Mizzy Motors, kills the Young Pyromancer. We see Anger of the Gods waiting on top of the deck. Just in case. He's just going to kill everything. He doesn't have a way to win yet. You see his hand is another is another Mortars, a Magma Spray, a Golgari Charm, Anger on top, and I believe his last card is Scavenging Ooze. So that's actually a pretty good one. Yeah, that's certainly a good card. And we saw Manny attack the Mutavolt into the Corsair last turn, and Gonzalo's just like, yeah, I, I see that you're trying to give me a two-for-one here. I'm not going to take it. So now he has Golgari Charm set up. So if Manny makes the same trade, Gonzalo's going to be able to get a two-for-one, but not with the Corsair, with the Golgari Charm, which I think is a trade that Gonzalo definitely wants to make. Yeah, Manny's going to go for it. He swings Mutavolt here. Right, so you're, you're expecting Manny to try to trade Mutavolt and Burn Spell for Corsair, but he's going to be disappointed with how this one ends up. He goes for the shock, and then here is the Golgari Charm to regenerate Corsair. Yeah, but I think Manny did this really well, right? He let combat damage resolve before doing it, and then played another land, so it's like, uh-oh. He might have two burn spells, so it ends up being a three for two. Um, I mean, I guess it, it doesn't really change. All right, so here's the danger. It's a three for two, and since right, Manny's... Right. Out, no, no it, it would have been different, actually, because Manny didn't play his Mountain in combat, so if... You know, maybe with damage, before damage, he uh, Golgari Charms. Manny wouldn't have been able to kill the Corsair that turn. He would have had yeah, to do right, it on Gonzalo's turn. So I guess, yeah, it doesn't change much. But but the danger is Manny is now out of cards, and Gonzalo simply just plays Scavenging Ooze and eats all, like, after all this trading, yeah. there's plenty of food for the Ooze. Manny's going to skull crack him once, but this is fine. Goes, goes, Gonzalo's at 18. He's got a 4-4. Four, four. Manny has no cards in hand. I am unconvinced of Railroad's ability to come back from this kind of board. Yeah, especially now that he uses a 5-5. Five five. So any potential Mizium mortars that Manny brought in to go with his Stoke the Flames, like, he basically just can't deal with the scavenging ooze. This isn't the kind of deck that has chained to the rocks or something. Well, I spoke too soon, because we talked about those Boros <laughs> Reckoners coming in because they're good against cards like this, so... Absolutely. And this is actually where, once again, that 5-5 five five is so important. Gonzalo has a Mizium mortars, and normally, right, like, where the ooze only a 4-4, four four, you, you couldn't orders the Reckoner. And, like, right. while I normally don't want a Mortar's Reckoner, this is, like, one of the few boards where I think I'm just okay doing it. Like, yeah, okay, I, I take four. It's really annoying that your yeah. card's good. I'll but... take four, but I'll also attack you for five. Well, well potentially make it six, six because yeah. ex exiling the Reckoner. So, so Gonzalo makes that play, goes down to 12. Back up to 13, eats the Boros Reckoner. Ooze becomes a 6-6. Six, six. And he's going to put Manny down to nine. It, it kind of looks like Scavenging Ooze might be the very best card that Gonzalo can have in this matchup. It's super cheap, it gains you a bunch of life, can potentially get you out of burn range and get itself out of burn range, and then it, you can just ride back to victory. And swing from Scavenging Ooze puts Manny down to three. He's got one more turn to draw here. He's going to stoke the flames at Gonzalo. So as long as he can top deck a nine-point bird spell, he should be fine here. Oh, yeah, that, that's no big deal, right? Yeah. His draw is not there, so we are on to game three. Manny almost had the clean sweep of four games against John Walkers, but Gonzalo not going to let him have it that easily. Yeah, I mean, you, you saw Manny draw a Stoke and a Lightning Strike at the end, so Gonzalo was at six, even after all that stuff, all the life gain from, like, the Coursers and the Scavenging Ooze. So it's like, if Gonzalo doesn't draw Scavenging Ooze, if it's, like, another removal spell or something, like, Manny probably has that game. Yeah, uh, there, there still are options here. I think... Double, like, it, man, Gonzalo drew the cards that are, I think, his, like, trumps in the matchup, you know? Magma so Spray, Corsair, Corsair. Yeah, and the Magma Spray didn't even come up as much. It was, yeah, Corsair, Corsair, Ooze. It didn't, but it covered him against a lot of stuff. Yeah. Magma Spray, Corsair, but, and it's interesting because that hand had no mana accelerants in it. Normally, when you play playing a deck like John Walker's, you know, you're wary to keep hands without mana accelerants, right? Those are yeah. pretty good, but having life gain seems to be more important. Oh, certainly, and... I mean, something like Magma Spray just being so cheap, like, that is effectively a life gain spell. 
if you get to play that on turn one or turn two and stop one of Manny's really good threats, then that is going to gain you more life over the course of a game than something like a turn three courser would. And also, by boarding in stuff like Magma Spray, Gonzalez is lowering his mana curve, and then the mana accelerants aren't as important. You know, like you might think right. game one, he's got a bunch of like Liliana, Vraska, Nissa, like all these expensive cards that he basically needs accelerants to play in a timely manner. You know, so those cards are actually uh, relevant on a board state. You know, they don't come down when you're basically like dead on board. But post board, maybe he's cutting on some of that stuff, uh, lowering his mana curve. And then it's like, well, if I draw an Elvish Mystic, that's kind of nice. If I draw a Sylvan Carry to it, it can block. That's cool. But Modern really, players. you don't need those. If you do not have an opponent, yeah, so raise your hand. if you're boarding out enough high end, do you start cutting yeah, mana creatures in a deck like this? Uh, that's certainly a possibility. I think Curiated fixes your mana and also blocks pretty well, so probably not that one. Against most Rabble Red decks with things like Foundry Street Denizen, Elvish Mystic is actually pretty good, kind of like as a pseudo Magma Spray. Like you can either block that or a Fire Drinker yeah. Seder. Uh, Manny doesn't have a ton of that stuff that he can actually block. Fire Drinker Seder and. A, a raw Legion right. Loyalist, Maybe, but then like some Elemental Tokens, some Goblin Tokens. It's like Mystic might be too good to cut and carry to like as a 0-3 is actually just a reasonable card. Yeah, I mean, I could certainly see cutting some Mystics, but I do feel like they still have value. Uh, I think a lot of that depends on how many Nissas Gonzalo wants to keep in. Though. Okay, if he's, if he's boarding out all the Nissas, then you may want to board out some Elves as well. Right. That would make sense. I don't know. He's got a good sideboard. I don't know if he has enough to make that. If you probably, like, the other I mean, thing is that that's going pretty far down the list of cards he doesn't want in the matchup. You know, for, like, yeah. your, your Liliana's and Vraska's probably come out first. Sure. But, I mean, he's also boarding in things like Anger of the Gods, so drawing a bunch of mana accelerants might not be the best plan there, too. Yeah. I'm trying to think other things he boards. He has Read the Bones in the deck. That's... Probably not very good I mean, here. Something like Miscutter Hydra might even be reasonable just because it's a thing that can put pressure on Manny. That's actually really interesting. Normally you wouldn't All right, you wouldn't right, think, well, oh yeah, you know, rabble you low end red on red aggro deck bring in Miscutter Hydra. Play. But uh play, when you play, play, it's not unreasonable. It is we have seen like that a four four for four last round when Steven Man was playing it. It was Gore Clan Rampager, no bells and whistles, just the guy. It was actually pretty good. And right. Miscutter, okay, yeah, it's a three three for four, which is a pretty relevant loss, but even a 4-4 four, for four, 5 is stabilizing in the matchup. Yeah, I mean, you look at Miss Cutter on any part of the curve, right? And it's like, well, that card doesn't seem very good. But the thing that makes it so good is that it's variable, right? You, If you have four extra mana and nothing else to do on that turn, you can make it a 3-3. Three, three. But this, this John Walker's deck ends up having a decent amount of mana sources, both because of its accelerants, but also because of Corsair Proofix. So, you know, on turn 5 or 6 or something, you might have just a bunch of mana lying around, not a lot to do, and then you're just like, hey, Manny, take 7. It's weak in the late game, but it's not unplayably weak. And as we've seen before, a 5-5 five five is, that's like the sweet spot against Rabble Red. It's like once you get to 5-5, five five, they, they don't really come back. They don't really kill your guy right. anymore. And you do have to pressure them because if Gonzalo did not have that pressure last game, Manny probably could have assembled enough burn to finish him off, even after just getting two for one multiple times to finish off those coursers. Right, Manny is playing a 16 burn spell version of Rabble Red, so right. that does change how you have to approach the matchup. Plus he's siding in things like Skullcrack. Yeah, we did see a Skullcrack. He does have a full three Skullcrack in his board, so you would assume that most of them, if not all, are in. And is it possible that like post-board Manny just becomes he just skews his deck even more toward being a burn deck here. Well, things like Fire Drinker Seder don't really line up well against Elvish Mystic. Uh, it's okay against Sylvan Karyatid, and uh, certainly pretty bad against things like Chandra Pyromaster and Golgari Charm, uh, which he knows are in Gonzalo's deck. Yeah, that's a very good point. A lot of these cards, he does get to see Gonzalo's sideboard, so he knows what he's playing around. Um, when you start cutting things like Fire Drinker Satyrs, that also encourages you to cut things like Legion Loyalist, too, because right. if, as you cut creatures, Legion Loyalist be looks more and more like Raging Goblin. Yeah, and then that weakens Gonzalo's Golgari Charms and the Anger of the Gods that he's sideboarding in. Yeah, exactly. So we are just about underway for Game 3 here. This, is, this one is for the championship. It is between Manny Oriana and Gonzalo Velasquez. Has John Planeswalkers won a tournament yet? Has it won a tournament? Probably somewhere. It Probably has won somewhere. A but okay, let's say. Oh. Well, let's say like open series. I'm pretty sure John Planeswalkers is basically just like 
the perennial second place finisher. It, I can tell you, it, it does have more than one runner up at the very yeah. least. So, you know, is, is it destined for another bridesmaid appearance? We'll see here. Uh, Manny starting out on two basic mountains, no plays yet. Gonzalo on two temples. Does not look like he has any plays either. And Enset Manny is going to magma jet him and start some scrying. That's always scary, right? Where they're just like, let's get this party started. Let's, let's start going upstairs, start burning you. Yeah, well, I really like, this is where Magma Jet is a really nice card. I mean, it's not shock draw card, but it's not that far off. Like scrying two in a mono red deck, it's, it's like probably more powerful than it is in a lot of other strategies. Oh, that's certainly true. One of the, one of the easiest ways for these burn decks to lose is just by getting mana flooded. And we see Chandra's Phoenix was the play that turn for Manny. He puts Gonzalo down to 16. Does Gonzalo have the stream of coursers like he did last game? It does not look like it. It looks like he does have removal. Let's see what he wants to do here. He has one courser, I believe. Yeah, so I think the two things to note here are that it looked like Manny scried Amizium Mortars to the top to deal with any potential coursers. And for all the removal spells that Gonzalo is siding in that deals with Chandra's Phoenix and exiles it, like Magma Spray and Anger of the Gods, he doesn't have it. Yeah, and you see Manny is going to go ahead and shock Gonzalo, get back Chandra's Phoenix, and recast. Gonzalo taking four that turn as a result. You know, Manny more or less, you could say, I think he, he cast a very good Stoke the Flames that turn, right? Four mana for four damage, and he gets to keep a 2-2 two -two around. Right. Yeah, it always looks like Manny's just off to such a slow start, right? And then you look back on turn four, and it's like, whoa, my opponent's at 12 life. That's exactly my thought, right? What did he play? He played a Chandra's Phoenix and, like, a couple shocks. A shock, yeah. Like, that's not good. Those aren't, those spells don't deal a lot of damage. How are, it's not like Gonzalo's just been playing shock lands on tapped willy-nilly, you know? Yeah. Like, to his credit, he's been doing his part. He's been... Like, he knows what he has to do to win this matchup, and he's trying. Gonzalo makes Sylvan Carrington for the turn. He does have a Courser, but finding a window to cast it is getting pretty difficult. Instead, he just has to keep his life total high. He waits until Manny attacks, then ultimate prices it. Probably knowing that Manny can buy it back, but just doesn't want to give Manny the attack as well. Right. And it is young Pyromaster for Manny. So a little bit of reprieve, Gonzalo not under a huge threat, not under an eminent threat here. He can maybe play his own threat. You see he has Dreadbor, Corsair of Crufix, Xenagos the Reveler in hand. He's going to start with Dreadbor on Young Pyromaster. And before that resolves, Manny will, ma will Lightning Strike Gonzalo, which makes an elemental, and rebuys the Chandra's Phoenix. Good play for Manny. Gonzalo's going to play Corsair. He has not made a land drop yet. Does he find a land on top? Yes, he does. It's stomping ground back up to 10. And you see the magma spray waiting on top of his deck. That could not have come sooner. Yeah. Well, it could have. It could I mean, it, it could have, and Gonzalo would have been he, very happy about that. <laughs> he he needs this magma spray. Yes, he does. Going with it's it. like, oh man, you're a little too late, but yeah, like I still like this. This is still great. Yeah, I mean he's about to he's about to face the Chand Chandra's Phoenix for the third time here. And Manny swings the elemental token into Corsair. Opted not to Chandra's Phoenix that turn. Uh -oh. We'll see if he has enough damage to finish Round it off. Two. I would assume so. And maybe not. He's going to play Boros Reckoner. And was that just a bluff? Hmm. Looks like his remaining that's, cards that's are, interesting. are Mizium Mortars and Chandra's Phoenix. Not a terrible bluff, actually. No, it's not. The guy's not doing anything else, and as soon as Gonzalo has an untapped Karyatid, you know that the Karyatid is just going to block the 1-1, one -one, so this was like the 1-1's one -one's last hurrah at maybe dealing a damage someday. Yeah, I mean, Manny does have the mortars in his hand that it looks like he just wants to overload next turn and get that Karyatid out of the way. Sure. I totally understand not playing Chandra's Phoenix that turn to get into damage when you know your opponent has a Magma Spray. It seems like just developing your board more solidly with a Boros Reckoner is probably going to be more beneficial. Yeah, you see Gonzalo making Xenagos and a Seder for the turn. The remaining cards in his hand are Magma Spray and another Xenagos. But boy, would a land be good for Manny here. And he draws the land for the turn. And here comes Mizium Mortars. Gravel Red in the rare situation where he gets the full six mana. Yeah, this 21 land deck. No lands in the sideboard. 
And what a huge turn. Just gets gets Corsair, gets Sylvan Curated, attacks down Xenagos. So I'm going to use this one card and kill all of your permanents. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. Gonzalo can recover. He does have another Xenagos and another Curated. Yeah. So he reloads, but... If Manny didn't have that Mortars, things were going to start to get pretty bad for him. Yeah, definitely agree. And a very interesting, a swing from the Seder with Gonzalo. That commits to him chump blocking with Sylvan Carriated. Yeah, I mean, like, what's the Seder going to do? Block the Reckoner? I mean, I, I think you're, I think you're probably... with Reckoner just is always miserable yeah. whenever you look at it. Yeah, well, especially if Manny plays uh, Chandra's Phoenix, Gonzalo's tapped out. So the Chandra's Phoenix is going to get a hit in this turn, right? So if you put the Seder on the Reckoner, Manny has four points that he can distribute anywhere he wants, and that's probably at the Xenagos. Yeah, he's going to go Reckoner to Xenagos, Phoenix to Gonzalo. The Karyatid will chump the Reckoner. Gonzalo will go to nine. That's the last damage that Chandra's Phoenix gets to deal here, but Gonzalo's going to need a way to kill Reckoner. That guy is just so good against green de against <laughs> green red like fighting that guy in combat is just the worst yep you see a temple from gonzalo well that's in his hand so he hasn't played that he's gonna make another satyr swing for four here's a temple he needs to find some way to mitigate this reckoner damage the the difficult part about reckoner is no matter how you fight him you always end up taking damage so when like i'm at a, when you're at a life low life total and your opponent has a reckoner some, you, sometimes you just don't have any way to not die. Yeah, you don't have a lot of good options. I mean, we saw Gonzalo use uh, ultimate price earlier to kill a Chandra's Phoenix, and it's like, well, that doesn't kill Reckoner. So you have a couple Dread Boars and a Hero's Downfall and a Bile Blight to take care of that thing. Yeah, Reckoner puts Gonzalo down to six. It's getting really low. You have to think Manny has some amount to burn, but how much is it? See him surveying the board here. He knows he's close. Probably just one burn spell away. Maybe not even that. Maybe the Reckoner can do it on its own. He's got to be careful. Manny makes a sixth power with this point of power with the Satyrs, and he's going to swing two of them. Puts Manny down to 10. So now it's reasonable to keep a Satyr back because it cuts Manny's clock by a turn potentially, but and not, that's not gonna, with the Stoke Manny's going to stoke the flames, Gonzalo, down to two, and with that, there's no way for Manny, Gonzalo, to not take two from the Reckoner, and Manny Oriana is your Star City Games standard champion here with Rabble Red fighting through a sea of Jund Walkers.